Hello, Brave Fest 2020. Um, God, just saying the year at this point hurts. Uh, my name is Andre. I am a member of Cometry, and at Cometry, we blend stand-up comedy and slam poetry, and we use these art forms uh, to have really tough conversations, but to also bring people together. I'm going to be performing a poem that I wrote called Sneezing, uh, and during the poem, if you hear something that really resonates with you or really connects with you, kind of maybe hits you somewhere in like this general area, you can snap, you can clap, you can stomp your feet, you can... Mm-hmm, you can hallelujah, I don't know, whatever it is you do, when you hear something that really resonates with you, you can do that. Uh, but this poem is called Sneezing. How do you explain a sneeze to someone who's never had one? Well, it's like when your nose smells something, it doesn't know how to handle it, so it retaliates. Or you ever get an itch in a weird place you couldn't reach? And the more you try to ignore it, the more it itches, so you start to convulse and shake in weird ways until it's satisfied. Dictionary says a sneeze is when you make an involuntary explosion of air through the nose and mouth due to irritation of one's nostrils. But if you've never sneezed before, that doesn't quite capture the unique feeling of the almost painful need to get this stuff out of your face. I once sneezed on a stranger, and the look of horror she gave me still haunts me to this day. And like it wasn't even my fault, I turned aside to sneeze like a decent human being, and she just happened to speed walk into it. I think the, great, the reason we don't have a great way to explain a sneeze is because everyone has already experienced it by the time we know the word for it. How do you explain racism to someone who hasn't experienced it? Well, it's like when someone looks at you and presumes to know your story without ever once saying a word to you or listening to you or looking at you. It's like when someone gets an itch in the back of their mind that the skin you're wearing is so 2014 or 1968 or 1861 is worth a retweet, but not equality, is still upset about that whole slavery thing, and the only way to alleviate the itch is to call you boy or thug or target. Or to pretend your struggle to survive doesn't exist, and so to help those who haven't experienced it understand just how common this still is, for the duration of this poem, I will replace the word racism with the word sneeze. I was 15 when I experienced sneezing for the first time. I was meeting my girlfriend's parents, and her father looked me in my eyes and said, I don't want you dating my daughter. He tried to blame it on other people's sneezing, that he was just looking out for our safety, but that's the thing about sneezing. Once you see it, you can always tell when someone's trying hard to hold it in. I used to believe that sneezing was just a thing we read about in textbooks. It could never happen nowadays, so it was a little jarring when someone sneezed in my face, no blessing or apology, just a shrug that said I shouldn't be so charred cedar. So pitch black pollen, so dark brown dust since that day, I've watched people sneeze openly and behind closed lips, and I can assure you, no one looks appealing when they're sneezing. Looks honorable with both eyes closed, and we seem to made it respectable to sneeze behind the same hands that shake our own, assuring us there's no sneezing problem. Like for people of color, it isn't allergy season all year round. Like this country can just Benadryl its way to equality. As if we weren't the ones struggling to keep breathing drowsy after being prescribed Twitter apologies. And isn't it funny how every sneeze can sound unique, but we also know when it's happening. Like we've been speaking sneeze our whole lives, reading it in nationalist napkins or far right shirt sleeves, claiming sneezing is just a part of our history. Chuckling at all the funny ways people try to stop it from happening, telling us their civil war monuments aren't about sneezing, that would be silly. No, the monuments embody a cure. Getting rid of all the irritants would be the best way to stop all this sneezing, wouldn't it? And in response, we all close our eyes and open our Facebook feeds. They're choosing an emoticon that shows just how angry we are at all this sneezing and the world keeps turning. Like this was all just ordinary. Like it was as natural as... <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, not long after the events of that poem happened... Um, I got a call from my, my girlfriend at the time, and she was bawling. And she said I had to come over and see something. So I drove over there, and as I'm pulling up in front of her house, in big white letters written across her car were the words, nigger lover. And at the time, I'm in high school, you know, I, I don't have the words for, like, self-care or trauma so I just I just kind of like internalize that and and something inside of me cracks and I just carry this crack around with me 
years go by and I crack again when Tamir Rice is killed. I crack some more when Eric Garner was choked to death. I shattered when Ahmed Arbery was murdered in broad daylight. Now, I probably don't have to tell the people that are watching this presentation of Brave Fest that racism is alive and well. It's in our politics. It's in our healthcare system. It's in our economy. And in the midst of all of that, it can feel really hard to be hopeful about any of that. Uh, something interesting, though, that is that is definitely happening, at least right now, is that these are still really prominent talking points. Um, I went to a protest at uh, the Austin Capitol put on by a school called Houston Tillotson, which is a historically black college in Austin. And I remember being on 6th Street, looking down, and as far as I could see were people. So, so many people from all different walks of life that came to support this cause and to demand justice. And you know, as someone who has experienced racism directly, that gave me hope. Uh, something else that, that, that's kind of happened recently is I, um, when George Floyd was killed, I started getting these texts from people, friends of mine, that some of which I haven't talked to in years from all over the country, asking if I'm okay or, or how I'm handling things or if there's anything that they can do for me. And this wasn't necessarily something that I ever thought that I needed, but, but getting those text messages, in a way, it validated that, that pain, that anguish, that just hopeless feeling that I've been harboring, and that too gave me hope. You know, part of the reason that, that Brave Fest exists, I think, is, is to try to bring people from, from totally different walks of life together and, and to give a space where we can tell our stories, share our artistry, share our passions, and, and be heard and be seen. And that is so, so important right now, especially with everything that is going on in our country and especially with it being an election year and it, and it making us feel like the world in our country is more divided than ever. We need these kind of lights, these candle lights to make us feel hopeful. And you being a part of this does that for me. And I, I hope for some of you, it, it does that for you too. Our ask at, at Cometry and, and really kind of like what we've always been about is we want to present tough topics in, in an artistic way to get people to have a dialogue, to have a conversation that ultimately leads to change. And so my ask of you as, as you continue watching Brave Fest and, and, and engaging in this content and in this community is that you remember the anguish, hopefully, that you felt when you learned about George Floyd and, or maybe the, the frustration that you felt when you learned about the ruling for Breonna Taylor. And you remember that emotion not to dwell on it, but to light a fire for you and keep these conversations going even after the election, um, even in the weeks and months where bigger things come into the headlines. You remember the things that we are fighting for so that we can keep this momentum going. Thank you all so much for, for letting me share some of my story with you. Um, if you want to learn more, feel free to reach out to us at Cometry. My email is, is andre at cometry.org. I'd love to hear some of your story and, and maybe how this poem affected you or how my story affected you. Uh, but thank you so, so much for just being a part of this community. And I hope you enjoy the rest of Brave Fest. Take care. <laughs>